Okay, here's a little bit you need to know about DNA. I think we all understand that DNA is made up of long strings of nucleotide bases. And there are four types of bases, and we refer to those as A, T, G, or C. Now, these are strung together to make very long strings of information. And this is often referred to as being a little bit like words in a sentence. But there are some key differences that you need to be aware of. And that is that in these strings of DNA, there are no pauses or gaps between the words. And the words can only be three bases long. Okay? And three bases are referred to as a codon. So the DNA is made up of strings of codons, and these codons code for information. Okay? Now, the problem for the cell is that you can make one string of DNA, it can be read three ways in three different reading frames to give three collections of codons. So one DNA can be read three different ways. Now, only one of those ways is correct, and that's called the open reading frame. So, and by way of example, if you consider um, one sentence here made up of English words, now, I've written that one sentence in three different reading frames. In the first reading frame, it makes complete sense. It's a bunch of three-letter words. And the big cow ate the pig. Yes, she did too bad for the pig. How sad. In the second reading frame, in other words, you shift the gaps between those same letters in the same order. So it's the same sentence, but you've just shifted the gaps. And then when you shift the gaps, it makes no sense. And it sounds like this. Okay, so there's no big cow eating the pig in that sentence. It's just gobbledygook. And again, you can create a third reading frame. In other words, you just, you just group those codons in the same string in a slightly different way, and you get another reading frame, such as this. And D T H E B G C O R F E P J S S H E D D T O O B D F O R T H E P G O W S A D. So the cell has special codons, and these codons indicate where to start and where to stop. So if you look at those three reading frames, for instance, in maybe the second reading frame, there might be a group of three letters that is a stop sequence. And that tells the cell to stop reading, to not read that reading frame. And another reading frame might have a start codon. And that tells the cell to start reading that reading frame. So I use these rules and principles when sonifying DNA. So I take one sequence of DNA and I read it in three reading frames. So I create three streams of audio, okay? So you'll get used to the sound of those three streams of audio. And then in each of those frames, I look for start or stop codons. And if there's a stop codon in the second reading frame, I stop playing the second reading frame. If there's a start codon in the first reading frame, I start playing the first reading frame. And in that way, um, I have a different instrument for each reading frame, and the different instruments start and stop, as, as, you'll, as you'll hear. Okay, thank you.